right now, initially here, um, they're just gonna introduce two concepts to you. They're going to introduce something called a union to you. The mathematical symbol for the union, when I hand draw it, it's just gonna kind of look like that, which kind of looks like an upright U. It's not an actual math symbol. All right, when you see it in Math Excel or you see it typed in a textbook, all right, it'll look a little bit more efficient than my hand drawn version right there. All right, but stop and think about just in general what the word union means. All right, when you get married, you form a union, right? You're joining things together. Okay, so in the world of set theory, if I had two sets and I want to union them together, I'm going to put them all together. All right. Remember in uh, elementary school where you were introduced to Venn diagrams? Okay. I could use a Venn diagram to represent this. All right. I could use a Venn diagram to represent this. There's two M's. All right. If I had a set A and I had a set B and I, were I was unioning them, I would put all of it together. So everything in set A and everything in set B would be the answer of unioning or putting together sets A and B, okay? Now, the other concept that they're gonna introduce to you is an intersection. All right, again, mathematical symbol for intersection is gonna look just like the union one, except it's gonna be upside down, all right? It's not technically an upside down U, all right? But when I hand draw it, I can't draw it very well. Okay, it looks like that. You'll recognize it when you see it in typed form. Okay. And again, think of an intersection. All right. If you think of an intersection uptown where two roads cross, isn't there a part in the center where the, they're the same road? All right. It overlaps. The part that overlaps is the intersection. All right. So if I had, if I wanted to use Venn diagrams to represent the concept and I had a set A and I had a set B, all right, well, where is the part? that overlaps or is in both. It's right there. That's the intersection, the part where set A and set B overlap. All right, so two simple, relatively simple concepts in this thing called set theory, in this branch of mathematics called set theory. All right, now, um, if it is set theory, then I'm going to have these things called sets. All right, and I'm gonna use set brackets, okay? So in general, my sets, I could put numbers in them, I can put words in them, I can put letters in them, I can put anything I want. So this would could be a little set of three items, okay? So I can have a set of letters. I could have a set of words, like cats, dogs, okay? So a set with two items in them, two elements, they're actually called elements. I could also have a set with numbers in them, okay? So when you get really into set theory, there's different things inside there. It's not always just numbers. All right, so that's what our sets look like. These are your set brackets that you're gonna use, all right? Now, if this set has three and this set has two and this set has five, all right, could I have a set that didn't have anything in it? I can have a set that, now I can have a set that doesn't have anything in it because if I just draw it like that, okay, bad set brackets. But if I draw it like that, there's nothing in it. It's still a set. It's a set of nothing. All right. We call this one the empty set because literally it's empty. It doesn't have anything in it. Okay. Now there are some other uh, ways that I could write it. I could, let's do or right here. I could do a line, a circle with a line through it. That's another mathematical symbol for an empty set. So I can do two brackets with nothing inside. I can do a circle with a line through it. All right, we can call it the empty set, but I can also call it the null set. All right, so just some more vocabulary. All right, I don't really know how intense the, the math Excel is gonna go on this because they're assuming that you've been introduced to set theory just a little bit, okay? So this is just kind of some basics. We're going to have unions and intersections. All right, this is what sets look like. You do have to have the little brackets and then we have an empty set and you can write the answer as an empty set either way. Okay, now let's see what some of the problems are going to look like. 
if they define the sets to begin with, like they could say, let A equal capital A, no capital A. Maybe in set A, I've got zero, one, three, and four. And then maybe in set B, I've got zero, two, four, and five. Okay, so this would be the problem. They're gonna tell you, let A equal this, let B equal this. All right, and then when they write the problem out, I could do a couple different problems. Let's do a part A and a part B. If I did A union B, then it would, it would be written like this. They'll use the capital A and capital B. They're referring to then the two sets and you're union them, which you're meaning you're putting all the numbers together. Now, only write down numbers once, all right, zeros in both. All right, but I'm only going to write down once. Four is in both, but I'm only going to write it down once. So if I combine this, these two sets, what's the answer going to look like? It's going to have a zero. It'll have the one. It'll have a two. It'll have a three. It'll have a four that I'm only going to write down one time, and then it'll have a five. So I just combined both those sets, and it's all the numbers that I see written down once. Okay, so that's not too bad. All right, now I, if I can do intersection, I can also do a union. Or I mean, if I can do a union, I can also do an intersection. So A intersect B. So in other words, what numbers are in both sets? Okay, well, zero is in one, so that's gonna be in an intersection. Four is in both of them, so it's gonna be in the intersection. So my intersection is zero, the ones that overlap, the ones that are in both. Okay, and right now, it doesn't get any harder than that. That's it. Okay, now the way this problem was set up, they defined the sets first and then wrote the problem like this. Okay, if they do not define the problems first or define the sets first, which they don't have to, all right, they could just literally draw the set, okay? So they could say one, four, seven, all right? That set intersect the set of two, six, and eight, okay? So they don't have to call the sets A, B, C, but they can, all right? If they choose not to, then this literally would be the entire problem. They just would draw the first set they draw the second set for you and then either put union or intersection in between there. All right, intersect. Is there any numbers that are in both? No. So this answer is the empty set. Okay, so you could choose how you would write that. You could draw the little empty set brackets or you could do the line, circle, line through. All right, to indicate that there is none, it's the empty set. All right, so... Um,